Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're in The Hague in the Netherlands at the SDN and NFV World Congress and I'm talking with Ashesh Mistra, who is the Chief Architect at SES and Oren Marmour, who is Head of NFV at Amdocs. Gentlemen, welcome. Interesting little piece, this something a bit different from, I wouldn't say run of the mill, but the things we've been doing up to now, moving into satellite territory for a change. So let's begin with you, um, Ashesh, please. Tell us about the, your move from being a satellite operator to a service provider in telecoms. Why did you do it? What benefits do you get from it? And what benefits do your customers get from it? Sure, Patrick. Um, I would word it slightly differently. We are not necessarily moving away from being a satellite operator at all. Um, that's what we are good at. That's uh, We're best in the world at uh, being a satellite operator. Um, what we are doing now with uh, standardization of our interfaces uh, with MEF certification um, and with the automation and orchestration work that we are doing with Amdocs, um, moving our connectivity all the way to the cloud with Azure, um, that's really us trying to better understand how our customers are using our connectivity at the end of the day. Um, most of the customers now are using satellite to get to their workloads in the cloud or to uh, get to their headquarters. Um, and to do that, it, it's absolutely critical for us to deliver a simpler uh, connectivity mechanism, one that they're more familiar with. Um, we want to be an enabler of uh, their business success. Um, for far too long, there has been this notion that satellite industry is something niche, something that's complicated to deal with. Um, and at SES, we're tr really trying to break that mold. Um, we want to deliver services to our customers that they're familiar with, and that'll really help them um, become more successful at getting their businesses off the ground. But during that process, you are becoming a provider of telecom services, is that correct? What are you actually providing? Absolutely, so we're going, uh, growing strengths on top of our existing satellite connectivity um, with Ethernet and uh, IP services. And now, uh, with the work that we are doing with um, Amdocs and Versa, um, adding SD-WAN capabilities on top of it. Um, so, that's a stack that's going to continue to grow as the customer's demands keep growing. Um, there's this uh, specific inflection that we are starting to see with customers where they're trying to um, digitize even the remote uh, assets that they have. Um, oil rigs or ships or um, small islands. And in order to do that, they need to have an intelligent edge capability. Once they have that intelligent edge capability, the capabilities that you build on top of those, um, the VNFs that you deploy there, that list starts growing. Um, and, and we are really going into these ecosystems as the experts of uh, delivering that intelligent edge. Another question to you, and then we'll bring Oren in. Why did you choose Amdocs and Microsoft? We really started with um, two schools of thought. First is, what is it that our customer wants to do with the connectivity? Most of their workloads reside in the cloud and they want to cross large geographic distances at high speed and low latency. Um, the second part of it was uh, somewhat related to the first, but it was more internal to us on how we wanted our architecture to look like in the future. Um, the confluence of these ideas um, go into two buckets again. One is that we absolutely have to be cl uh, cloud native. We are already as satellite uh, as a satellite leader, um, cloud scale. We reach about 99% of the earth. We are the only uh, players in the market with uh, satellites in two different orbits. One providing highly resilient, broad connectivity, um, very cost efficient. The other one providing extremely high performance, fiber-like connectivity uh, to your doorsteps. So we we had that part covered. Now we need to actually connect to the cloud, which was our recent announcement with Microsoft um, with Express Route. The second part of it was the necessity to standardize, automate, and orchestrate um, our entire uh, service lifecycle. Um, and and for that, Amdocs was a very um, logical partner for us. 
um, they're the ones who spend probably the most amount of time trying to understand the intricacies of um, the, the satellite connectivity piece that we have. Um, and not only the technical um, challenges that it brought, but also um, the organizational challenges that we faced uh, in transforming from a relatively manual provisioning business to an orchestrated um, business that wanted to bring uh, new services to our customers faster. Thank you. Oren, let's turn to you and you can come into this bit as well. Uh, I in, in a few seconds time. Can you tell us what the unique aspects of this project are, were? Oh, first of all, I think it is, as you stated in your introduction, uh, uh, a new vertical for us. So it's a, it's a satellite communication company. When you look at it, the, the technical aspects are actually very much similar to some of the other projects we've done, but so far we've been focused much more on the traditional either fixed line or mobile operators. For us, satellite and understanding some of the applications, that is definitely unique. Second element is the Microsoft Azure, the, the public cloud. It is, as far as we know, the first uh, large-scale public cloud deployment of NFV virtualization and automation, and, and that is quite unique. It does allow not only to simplify the introduction of NFV and to avoid the upfront investment in building your own telco cloud, it allows a much larger scale, global scale. And I think that the third element, uh, it's actually nice to talk about this at this show, exactly a year ago at the same show, we've launched our NFV SD-WAN package, which was uh, an extension of what we've already been doing with some of the large service providers such as AT&T and Bell and Comcast and others, but we wanted to provide a more pragmatic approach for operators that are still a bit hesitant to start adopting NFV. So we said, let's prepackage existing use cases, VNFs, SD-WAN controllers, and so on, and offer a very a quick, rapid, cost-effective way to deploy this, and, and, and SCS is one of the uh, uh, first customers of quite a few we've, uh, launched, uh, we've announced recently that is uh, adopting this package. So it's basically taking the package, deploying it on Microsoft Azure, and, and, and applying that to a new vertical and a unique application. Ashish, what's the relationship been like? What's it been like working together? I think it's been amazing. Um, one of the, the significantly um, more fruitful relationships we've had um, over a large period of time. Um, for our business, we are, we're in this unique situation where we have, like I mentioned, two different um, types of satellites. Yep. Um, and as a result, they have different performance characteristics. They have capacities that land in different teleports. Um, so SD-WAN was a, a foundational piece of integrating those networks together. Um, and having that solution prepackaged come in uh, with Amdocs, we were able to show that success really quickly. Um, and being able to do that in a short period of time um, with a new service kind of helps build that internal consensus yeah. on um, go embarking on that transformation journey of virtualization and cloudification. Um, so I think Amdocs has been really helpful in helping establish that roadmap of how to get from point A to point B. Um, and then driving through it um, at, at a very deterministic pace. What difference is the project going to make to your business, Ashish? I think it's transformational. Um, we, we are in a position at the moment where um, we are going to launch new capabilities in the next 18 months that are going to um, increase our capacity, the number of endpoints, and the overall size of our network by an order of magnitude. Um, at which point, it becomes absolutely necessary that the entire service provisioning uh, model is automated. Um, at the same time, we have this relatively unique, somewhat proprietary uh, satellite segment, which it, for, for good reasons, um, that proprietariness exists, um, because it's at the absolute bleeding edge of technology. No one else has ever built those systems before. Um, and how to hide that complexity um, from the end-to-end -end services that the customers actually consume? Um, if we have um, a mobile customer that's out in Papua New Guinea, they don't really care much about there being a satellite segment in the middle. What they really want is to get YouTube content. Or if you're an oil rig uh, in the middle of the ocean, you really want to get to your Azure instance 
um, so that you can run your learning algorithms properly. Um, and to create that degree of abstraction um, from all of the complexity that lies in the global connectivity model, um, I think that's truly powerful. Excellent, thank you. I'm going to give the last question to you, Oren, which is this. This is a new approach for Amdocs. We've already covered part of that. And you're working with Microsoft, ONAP, and a satellite operator all together. Again, what's it been like? And do you see this as opening up more new opportunities for Amdocs? Right. So, so first of all, as, as Ashesh mentioned as well, it's been a tremendous and an amazing partnership in between all three vendors, I think it's it's a new domain for for all three of us. So so Microsoft is obviously extremely strong in Azure, and then you know, I think in, in a lot of segments they are the leading public cloud provider, but they were focused much more in the enterprise domain, and 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 this is another way for them to further penetrate into the networking and telco domain for for uh, SES as Ashesh just uh, uh, mentioned. For us, it's definitely opening up new opportunities. So we were uh, uh, we've been. Fairly successful, uh, we've opened up uh, quite a few new opportunities. We've announced quite a few wins just over the last couple of months, but a lot of them were focused on our traditional uh, uh, OSS, BSS customers, so the large tier ones of the world. And this for us was a great proof point both in the market as well as internally, that there are new market segments, market verticals that we might not have been aware of. And to be very frank, and as I've mentioned in, in, in another panel today, I'm not sure too many folks at Amdocs knew who SES was before, simply because they weren't one of our traditional customers. So it is showing that there's uh, there are tremendous opportunities out there. It's a great proof point how Public cloud is a great way to expedite adoption for NFV, and it's also a great proof point to show the, the operational business benefits of, of NFV. I think, and this is very, very much apparent through this event, and I keep mentioning that there are still too many service providers that are unfortunately sitting on the fence. You know, I, I think uh, <laughs> whether it's for uh, the fact that NFV is extremely revolutionary and there's a bit of a, of a caution in, in the approach, whether it's because it, it, it's beyond technology, it also has a great impact on the organizational structure, so, so people are a bit hesitant to make those changes and maybe are leaving them for the next, uh, next person in line after them. Uh, but I think that the more actual real life deployments we can show. The more customers we can show that are speaking up and, 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 and talking about the actual operational benefits, the, the benefits of service agility, the ability to generate new revenues, the ability to introduce automation and reduce operational complexity of the network, hopefully that will encourage more and more to hop off the fence and, and jump on, on the right wagon towards full virtualization and automation. Thanks, it's a really interesting story, and gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed in telling it. Sure, thank you. Thank you.